did it start? Okay, it did start. I'll be editing that. Let me make sure. Nope, it's I see it backwards. So let's click the little mirror thing. One second. Come on, stop lagging. Yeah, we got paper, right? Give me a second. Oh, wait, did it work? There we go. Because now in my little window, I see the writing. You guys, I think always see this in the correct order, but some of the YouTube videos have been flipped, so I need to go back and edit things. Okay. So what we're going to be doing today, you're going to get two equations. One of them has a graph that's a line. One of them has exponent two, sort of like all your problems on the unit. And it's a, it's a parabola. So lesson five is doing the following. Let's sketch one out. It doesn't have to be too big, maybe like five lines. Okay. And if you have colors, it'll be useful so you can see things. So like you have a line. Okay. And then you also have one of these guys going on. And notice right here and right here, this is where they cross, right? Those are the solutions. So this is a solution. This is also a solution. And since these two graphs came from equations, they call, come from something called a system of equations. A system of equations is when you have more than one equation that exists like in the same spot they're going together doing more than one thing okay it's like where nowadays in sports both men and women it's like any sport that i can think of you may see them with tablets off to the side in the nfl they have a partnership with windows so they have like windows surface tablets on the side and you see them like looking at it and the coach like look at this that that they're looking at the visuals but also someone is handling a bunch of equations going on whether they're rushing the ball well throwing or whatever the defense is doing so let's get our first problem. Okay, so our two equations are y equals 2x squared minus 6. Let me erase, I can erase this one right here because I want more space off to the side. Since we have two equations also, what you're going to be noticing is that I'm going to be numbering them. So this is problem number one. This is equation number one that exists in problem number one. Okay, 2x squared minus 3x minus 6. Usually for these problems, like if you saw them, when you see them on your screen later for practices on the fifth lesson or the, the mastery test, you'll see them one on top of you know, each other. I know that it's maybe beneficial for us to see them side by side because I'm going to want to do something with this one. My other equation is 12x minus 8, no, 12x equals 8 minus 4y. Here are two equations. This one has equate has exponent 2, so I know this one's going to look like that sooner or later. I have to do VASI to figure out where is it located and how wide is it. This one doesn't have any exponents, so that's the line. Okay, that's linear, that's quadratic. Okay, so how is this going to go? I said we're going to do VASI, so let's do VASI. Again, I believe this is the second or third unit where we've been using this. I'm getting hot in here, at least for me. They turned up the heat. I know it's colder in the science room, but still, they're exaggerating now. Okay, one formula that we've seen before is x equals negative b over 2a. Need you on your papers to label the numbers that are over here with a's, b's, and c's. Lesson four also had you do that for the quadratic formula. You're going to label them with A's, B's, and C's to do that because I'm about to do it myself up here. So A is this, B is negative 3, C, which I don't need here, but I'll still label it, is that. So I'm going to have to do negative some number, which is the B. On the bottom, there's a 2 times some other thing. B is negative 3, uh, A is 2. We simplify, we'll... What does this mean? Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. The bottom is 4. How much is 3 quarters worth? How much is 3 quarters worth? Put it in the chat or unmute yourself. You know this. The more engaged you are, the more it clicks for you. How much is 3 quarters? 
because that's my value for my x. How much is three quarters? Thank you. This is my x value. You could just put that in the calculator, but I know you're, more of you will make mistakes if we do that than this. So that's why we're doing it in this format. Well, if I have an x, I need a y, right? How do I get the y? Well, you go back to the equation and go y equals the jasmine on the graphing calculator. Type this for me. On the graphing calculator? The graphing calculator. We're going to do, we're going to figure out what happens if I didn't leave enough room. So if I write smaller, you won't be able to read it. 75. I'm changing all of the x's into. Oh, wait, no, the original in green. Okay. Minus 6. We either need to put this into a regular calculator to figure out the y, or what you're going to be seeing on the smart board in a second, because Jasmine from Math 3 is assisting me. You're going to type this equation, and then on the table, we're going to put 0, 0,75. Let me move this over so you can see that. Oh, not yet. So the, I'll put y equals. So y equals on meta calculator. You press the blue one. Okay, and then you go to table. Okay, and then you go to create table. And then you change up here to 0 0.75. So 75, 0 0.75. And then you'll see on the table, this is equivalent. It's negative 7.1. That's the number that you need. Okay. Or that's where the vertex is at, actually. In the closet, Kira? Is it negative 7.1? Okay, so my B from Bassey, let's fix this up, is going to be negative 0, 0.75, comma, negative 7.1. That's V. So let's start. We're going to start our graph off. And again, the order in which you do these types of problems, there's a there's different orders. Once we do number two, I'm going to do it in a, a different order. Because if you actually did come and pick up this stuff like I've yet, or I sent it over to you with your sibling who you graduated recently, okay, you should have some graph paper. Okay, Your graph should end up more symmetrical and more accurate than what I'm doing over here on the board with no lines. This is me just freehanding it. So we're going to make a big graph. Your graph, I recommend, should take about half the page. So far, we're just going to have one point. Okay, so let's do a couple lines and try to make them the same length in case you don't have graph paper like me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that would mean 7.1 is a little bit lower. So like right there. We have 75 cents. If this is a dollar, Half, 75 would be like right there. So down here is my vertex is down there. What's the A and the S? Isn't it this thing? Anybody remember what this thing is called? It helps me line up the parabola. What's the AS for? Some of you have been done and finished things on time. It's been a while since you've used that word. It's basically that, but it's a special line. Axis of symmetry. But axis symmetry is a line of symmetry. It's both things, but it's even more specific because it's the it's the line that's on the graph. That's why we call it an axis, where we can guide ourselves. We know it's going to go up. Okay, so we, on VASTI, we did V, we did A, S. What's the Y for? What did Y stand for when we were doing this stuff before? What is the Y, the meaning of Y? Y what? Which is going to be the point somewhere over here on the y axis where it goes to. What's that called? Anybody remember that term? It's the same word like in like in football, where you I, if I'm throwing it to my teammate, but Alex jumps in front of from the other team, he jumps in front, he grabs it. What's that called? Yep. We need to get our y intercepts. Which y intercepts your points. Which one's the y? This one. You need to see y. What's the other one? Zero. Okay. So we have an equation. We're going to change all of the x's to zero now. So 2 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 6. I could have Jasmine go over there and type zero on the graphic. I'm not going to ask her because I think you guys can handle this. 
0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0, meaning this equals 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. You just end up with the last number, y equals negative 6, meaning you have to grab 0, comma, negative 6. Okay. It's sort of easy. This is why this format for the equation is good for finding y-intercepts. Okay? Not good for other things like the vertex. Negative 6 is right here. So I know my graph goes like this. Okay. Oops, a little bit crooked. But... And so like around right there looks symmetrical to me. It's going to go like that. So, so far I've, I've graphed half of the thing. Like on this problem, when I was looking at it in Edmentum, they gave me this because VASI is a pretty long process. And they want to see if you know how to graph the line, which we haven't done all, all year. They're expecting, you're going to remember, if it was with Ryan or by yourself, you're going to remember all the y equals mx plus b stuff that he told you. I know he did. Okay. So we're going to see how do we get that equation. So I'm going to flip it back to the other side. Because remember equation number two, which is sitting here, and we haven't even talked about him. Well, now we're going to talk about him. Let me just clear out the stuff. Everything we've done has been from equation number one. Some teachers, when they're doing this level, which is advanced algebra or algebra two work, they don't number the equations. I find it easier. Also, I'm accustomed to this. I don't remember. It was either junior year or, or sophomore year. One of those is when I started seeing systems of equations. So it was either Mr. Gallagher in geometry at the original SAC High, not the charter school. Okay, I don't like them. Or it was Mr. Swanson in Algebra 2, who was the one who did the little numbering thing. So I do the numbering thing. So we did all the stuff for this one. Now let's do number two. It doesn't say y equals mx plus b. To remind you, we would, the easiest way to graph stuff is for it to look like this. Well, we don't have that. So we need to move things around by using our algebra skills. Okay. Here's the y. I need to get rid of these numbers. I do this one first. And I get rid of that how? Hopefully you know that it's by division. You do it to each one. You put one big line, but some of you are going to forget that that means that you're dividing both of them by negative 4. So I'm going to get y equals 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3x. Negative divided by negative is positive is this. This is the line that I need to graph on my graph. And this is another equation. It looks different. It's the same thing as number 2, but I just moved it around. It's like if I was saying brandila, cristal. Like if I type it that way in in the computer, which I think in Edmentum, I think it shows up like that. Or, But if I look in student track, it says Cristal Brambila. It's, a, it's the same person. Okay, just, I'm moving it around. Or for some of you, when I look in student track, the phone number, I'm like, oh, that's what their middle name is. I'm like, oh, the middle name matches with the mom and stuff like that. So let's graph that equation. To remind you so that you can see it, negative 3x plus 2. This is the B. This is where you begin. I begin at 2. 1, 2. What do I do? This is negative 3 over 1. That's how you move. Okay. You go down 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3. Don't put a dot there, and then you go over 1. The dot's here. And then it's going to go like this, and it's going to go like that. And I'm going to make the blue thing go up to make it more obvious that sooner or later this crosses, right? So here's a solution, which I want to know those numbers, and I want to know these numbers. This one actually looks like it matches up to something Okay, on my graph. Just looking at my graph, I'm thinking that this is 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm thinking it's this. We will see once we do some calculating if it's true. Over here, I'm not even sure because I didn't draw the lines. It looks like it's 1. Maybe it's at negative 2. Is it at negative 2? And if I go up in the same manner, I know it's very high up there. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like it's 8. So we're going to test to see if this is true. Is this, are these the actual answers? This is why we have algebra, because if you don't have a graphing calculator, or if you're not being careful, 
or you can't be as accurate as graphing paper, graph paper because you're on a whiteboard. Okay, you need to do some algebra. I know the problem with this. I need to know what are these specific spots. Like if you watch the, the movie Hidden Figures based on three um, black mathematician and scientists that helped out to make sure people wouldn't blow up in space and get to where they needed to get to, they did stuff like this. You saw them on chalkboards and things of that nature. Okay. So let's do some algebra to see how do I use both of these equations. No, we, we could zoom in on a graphing calculator and do stuff. We're not going to do that. Okay. If possible, rewrite the three equations that you see on the board. I think are all three visible at the same time? I think they are. Because notice, okay, this one doesn't have y equals. The one down here does have y equals. I'm going to write it um, more up on the board so that I don't have to tilt all weird. Here are my three equations. This one has y equals, so, so does this one. The y is the same y because this is part of the same system. Okay, it's not a different thing. Okay, part of the same team. This means that I can do number one, equation number one, equal to number three. What does that look like? Well, I'm not going to put y equals y because that doesn't help me. Do the other information. Number one says this. Number three says this. These two are equal to each other. They don't look like they're equal. We need to form them just like a diamond in the rough. You polish it off, cut it the right way, then it looks nice and it's worth lots of money. Okay, this is our diamond in the, in the rough. We want to get it equal to zero because we know how to solve stuff like that. That's the whole point of this unit. So this we do plus 3x plus 3x. We do minus 2 minus 2. I'll pause for a second. Also for me to double check to make sure if I'm going in the right direction. Because I missed the negative on this problem. It was taking forever. I'm like, why is this one not working out? So let's make sure that I wrote everything down correctly. Where is it at? Oh. Right, number two is one where it was taking forever. This one I did fine on the first try. Okay. Again, these are opposites. That's zero. That's zero. You get a zero. We want to get a zero. Negative six and negative two is negative eight. You buy something at the store. That's six dollars on the credit card, the debit card. Then another two. That's eight the two spent. Those cancel and you get two X squared minus eight. Lots of different ways to solve this. Let's do this. Less than one style, because there's only one X. I can do it like less than one. Those who were present yesterday, I did upload the video, by the way, that we did yesterday. I may need to do some editing because the stuff on the board is backwards because I didn't add on the little app to fix that. They used to have a tool here in the meet, but they took it off. I don't know what. Beginning of the pandemic, it was there. Like when I had one of your guys' siblings, I would able, be able to press that little button. Okay, we're solving the equation. There's no surprises because you've seen these steps before lots and lots of times. So we have x squared. Remember the little tree thing? It's the square root tree. Here's the square. Here's the square root. x equals. You get two answers. Okay, they had two kids. Positive and negative 4. This is where they're crossing. Positive and negative 4. Notice we were off on our graph. I'll show you in a second what I mean. On our graph, I thought that the x might be positive 2 and negative 2. I at least knew that it was the same number. So evidently, let's make our corrections. I know that it's full, negative 4. I don't know what the y is. Maybe it's the, the, the y number was correct. Okay. This is why the algebra leads to more accuracy. We're going to do the thing with the graph. So now Jasmine is going to type in, um, type the, uh, the original. You may already, oh, you may have had it. And now you have choices because we have three different equations. You can type into the graphing calculator any of the three equations. Which one did you put y equals? Jasmine is typing the first one. Okay. Okay. Just so that you can see. So go back up so I can see. 
Yeah, so here's the equation. She's gonna click table, which is where you verify, did I type the thing right? If yes, then make the table. And then she's gonna change the 75 cents, that's for the other problem, change it to negative four. Okay. Hmm, let me see if you typed it right. Yeah. Well, that's just extra, but that doesn't seem like it's gonna change anything. Cause that's not the value that I got. Cause I know that value is not that. Minus three x minus. Hmm. Why is it giving me the wrong value? Press table again. Create table two x squared. Yeah, that's way too big. Type four, let's see what it gives us. These are not the values. Okay. Is... Let, me, let me double check something. Oh, none of you told me at home. The reason why those, those numbers are correct. Yesterday, Javier corrected me. He didn't correct me today. This is practice because you get these types of problems on momentum. These are the ones that usually students miss. What did I do wrong on the bottom corner? What did I do wrong down here? I saw x squared equals four. I did the square root, square root of four, and I got this answer. Is this the correct answer? What's the answer supposed to be? This is why I'm looking at that graph and count saying those aren't the answers. That doesn't make sense. I know my graph that I drew on the whiteboard is not that off. What is the square root of four? The square root of four. Okay, it should be two. So on my graph, technically I did. My x values were correct. Negative two, positive two. Graph's a little bit crooked. Now let's we're gonna use the graphing calculator, that table, to check these values. Okay. So Jasmine, put negative two. Okay, and then we look on the table. Negative two is eight. That's what it says over there. Change it to two. Not that we can't just look over here, but let's just, okay. Negative four. Oh, I got it right. Okay, I got lucky. By the way, this is also to show you practice, why it's helpful. When I did this last night, I didn't get it right. On my paper, I had to fake it. I said, oh, I have to show them how to do the algebra because these are actually correct. It is negative negative two comma eight and two comma negative four. These are the two solutions. I wasn't sure because I don't have graph paper. This is not on the graphing calculator. That's why I do algebra, okay? So let's do another system of equations. And our system is a quadratic and a linear equation. So it's gonna have a line and a parabola. Okay. But this time, instead of starting with the VASI stuff, Let's start with this stuff. That way we go into the graph being sure of what the answer should be. We know where they should cross, and then our only job is, okay, draw the line, draw the parabola. So let's do the equation solving stuff first. So number two, equation one from the system says y equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 1. This is a quadratic. Spanish cuadrado, the square, okay, cuadrado, quad, that's how you say that, because we say squared in English, and it looks like this. Then the other equation, 2 is, I'm sure I'm looking at the right one, 12x minus 3y equals 21. I want both of them to be y equals, and I need, I need to do some stuff. Okay, I need to get rid of... I need to do this part first. The opposite of that is negative 12x. Negative 12x. 3y equals negative 12x plus 21. We divide it by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. We get y equals 4x. Take me forever to realize that this one's a negative, not a positive. That was throwing me off in my calculations. 
this. This is equation number three. Okay. I'm going to notice that equation number three has a y equals. So does the first one. So one is going to be equal to three. And that's how I'm going to be able to get my answer of like, where are those points? And I'm going to be sure that that's the answer. But when they're doing like NASA and other space agencies or like SpaceX and all those are doing things and sending rockets and satellites, they need to know that what the Earth's orbit is, maybe the moon or the orbit of the other planets, having equations with something to the second power. They need to know when is it going to intersect because they need to get it at the right spot and they don't want it to crash into certain things, which should be obvious to you. Okay, from equation number one, so again, one is equal to three. One says two x squared minus six x plus one. Number three says four x minus seven. Again, I want a zero on one side. Put it on the side where the x squared is not. We do opposites, positive. The opposite is negative. Negative, the opposite is positive. Zero, zero. One plus seven is eight. This is negative 10x, it's positive, two x. They notice that all three things are even. When things are even, We'll divide by two or bigger evens if it's possible. If we were just factoring, I would just do these divided by two. This one is because I am solving the problem. When I'm solving, do it over there too to make the two go away. I don't care about that too. In factoring, don't make it go away because you're going to pick the wrong answer. When I divide everything by two, this is x squared, this is negative 5x, and this is 4 equals zero. When I see three things, I got that formula with the negative boy like the last lesson, or I can do what we did in the second lesson. Let's do it lesson two style. Lesson two style says to factor this. How? You do this. Okay. When I do four, I do negative five. This is multiplication, this is addition. Okay. Think for a second, tell me the two answers, because those two answers are gonna help me fill in these parentheses. And then I'm going to do SLS on this thing and get two answers. What are the two numbers that multiply to four? And in this case, it's not going to be the usual ones, by the way. Two times two is not going to cut it because you can't get five out of that. What's the other way you get four? It's so obvious that if you're, going to, if you're thinking about it, actually, you're going to be like, what is the other way to get four? How do I get four other than two times two? Yeah, it's four times one. But to make them add up to negative 5, just go like this. When you're splitting them up, x minus 4, x minus 1. Because it popped into my head. I shouldn't be doing this, but Edward, when you get a chance, upload that doc that you have for the Unit 3 work, whatever you have, upload it. I'll just be taking off some points if it doesn't have all of the problems that you did with me or Dom and stuff. But we'll get that into the grade books. Make sure you do that. Not right now, but at some point. Okay, we have this. If not, I'm going to forget to tell you that. SOS, split it. Here's one equation. Here's the other equation with zeros. That's the L. Solve it. This one is 4. This one is 1. We're going to use our graphing calculator again. For what? Well, we're going to put one of our new equations. So, Jasmine, pick an equation from 1, 2, or 3. Uh, type two. It, 2. She's going to type 2. See if it lets you. I don't know if it lets you. Good test to see if the website lets you. So you get to type any of the equations. We're plugging in the values 4 and 1. Jasmine is evidently typing this one to see if it lets her. Press table. Let's see if it likes you. I don't. No, it doesn't like it. You have to do 1 or 3, so do 1. Desmos would have let her, but for Desmos, doing the table is annoying. I don't, never remember how to do it. There's too many steps. This one works like a natural graphing calculator, like how they should work. Desmos okay, is good for Desmos is good for other things. And then plus one. Plus one. Okay, you type the equation. This is in the blue section for graphing calculator on Meta. 
calculator, press table. I want to know what is it when it's four. So type type four, and obviously we can look at it. I just type. Did it stop working? It's still dead. gonna take a while. Hold on. What's happening? The heat in the room is getting to the <laughs> wireless thing. There we go. Four is supposed to be nine, okay? And then type one. So four, nine. And we could just type one and we would have saw, saw both of them on the table. Give her a second because the Bluetooth stuff is being weird. There we go. And I swear somehow it might be the heat because like, you know, the wireless stuff, it is waves of energy, heated waves of energy. There you go. The, the hotness right here in between here and over there. One is negative three. Okay, so one negative three. But we're trying to answer so that guy. So it's probably because of the distance. Well, but it was working before. If not, the, dis the distance usually is a little bit more for it to start messing up. At least it was before. Okay, so now we know where they cross. But I want you to be able to know the picture because that's also important. So our answers are was one negative three. The other answer was four comma nine. So whenever we get to the graph, which is coming up, this is where they should cross. We're going to see how accurate we can make it, or we're going to sort of make it look like it fits. Okay, we know that's what should happen. Okay. Well, let's make our graph. Because we can put our line already. We already did the work for that. Equation number three is what we're going to use for the line. Three and two are the same things. It's y equals mx plus b. This is where you begin. Four over one is how you move. One way to think about the m and the b. Remember, m is slope also with its official word. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice roughly. Separated the same amount. Oh, I'm going to need more than that. Evidently. Four. I'm going to need four more. Not seven, I mean. One, two, three, four. So this is 11. Okay. One, I go up here. Here is my line. Make sure it's right above it. It's not that. The more accurate you can be on setting them up, the better for later on. Okay, here's my line, the linear part of the system. We need our parabola. Where does that come from? Well, we need to do VASI to number one. Number one says 2x squared minus 6x plus one. We could do the big long thing with completing the square. I'm going to do that. It's like, it's nice, but I, I'd rather have you do something more efficient, which is this negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2a, b is negative 6, a is 2. Negative times negative is a positive. The bottom is a 4. How much is 6 quarters? How much money is 6 quarters? That's what this is, 6 quarters. That's one way to say 6 fourths. Mm -hmm. I believe all of us grew in the U.S. or you've been here long enough to know what 6 quarters is. How much is that? That's the x that I need. And then we're going to go to the table, and it's going to put, we're going to find our y. I need to know how much money is six quarters. You know four quarters makes a dollar. How much is six? Hurry it up, people. Thank you. Dollar fifty. Jasmine, change it on the table to a dollar fifty. Or one point five. Same equation. Notice we can reuse with the technology the stuff we have. 1.5. That's negative 3.5. Good. That's how to be efficient. You don't want just shortcuts. You want smart cuts, as this audiobook that I heard at some point this year said. Okay, 1.5. That's 2. Then 1.5 is here, right? Yeah. Okay, then 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative three and a half is down there. So here is the vertex with its axis of symmetry. Like that. Because I'm doing VASI. 
Remember the football thing, the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept, by the way, the super shortcut thing is, you remember it's one of these numbers. Anybody know which of the numbers is it? Is the y-intercept two, negative six, or one? Which one is it? We could also change this to a zero, this to a zero, and then we get our result that way. Or we remember something about the y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept? Because I can either do this step, or I remember, oh, I know it's one of these numbers. First thing cancels, second thing cancels, it's the last number. Oh, not right. Yeah, like that. Zero and one is right here, y-intercept. So it's going to curve like this. I have to go the same distance that way, so it's going to go to 3, 1. Okay. On my graph, I'm not going to be able to show the other one. Hopefully you know that this is one of the answers, right? One solution is right here. Where they cross, that's the solution. The other one, if I keep on going like this, and this line goes up here, way up here, so you can see, if I keep on going up here, and up here I drew this too big, it's the answer somewhere up here on the wall. But we already know what they are. They're already written right here. Let's see how accurate I was. This one, okay, that's like a negative one. Negative one, one, two, three, four, sort of. Notice on my graph, hmm, why did I get positive one? Let me see. Like that off on the equation. Let me, Let me double check what equation three was. Make sure the line wasn't slanted the other way. Oh, none of you told me that. Parabola is correct. What's wrong with the line? This isn't what it said before. It said this. What's wrong with the line? And I know that it's, notice what prompted me to know that it was incorrect was that I already have the answer right there. Where should the line, where should this dot be instead of up there? This line should not be up here. That's positive seven. This is why this solution, it looks weird. That doesn't, it's not even close to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Arrange camera. It starts here. We go up four, one, two, three, four over one. Goes right here. Okay. Notice. Okay, that's closer. Looks like the answer is like up there. Okay, what's this dot right here? I'll put a little star so that you can notice that. Well, that looks like one comma negative three. Notice this is correct. The big reveal up here. That's what I already wrote down over there with the algebra. So that part of the graph is good. What about the other one? Well, way up there, looks like it's lining up maybe with the four. It looks like this guy up here is four, comma, but how high am I going? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Looks like it's past 11, and I know that's not right. Okay, that's when I can say, oh, this is where nine should have been. Okay, this is four comma nine. It's not accurate to how I scaled it over here because I started going too skinny as I went up. One of those little gaps is not the same, but that's what my system of equation looks like. Parabola and our systems, we have one parabola, one line. And we do the work to solve the equations. Some of your problems, they ask you to do the whole thing all by yourself like these ones. On other equations, it's not like that. They just give you the picture already done. You just have to read it off of what you're seeing right there. Let me give you one of those. So I'm going to give you a graph. I'm going to try to not give it away by putting little stars. I'm going to draw it as accurate as I can. Hopefully you're making observations on how things are spaced. Number three, we need to find the solutions. Here's our graph. 
Yeah, and I'd recommend doing like a half page graph. Okay, one, two, three. So one, three. Do I want one, two, three on the other side? Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the line starts there. That's not that important for me. One, two, over. So I'm going to go up two over one, so right here. There's my line. Let me do my parabola. So my parabola is going to do the following. Let me see. Let me put some lines down here. One, two, one, two, three. Let's pass that. One, two, somewhere in between here. The vertex is somewhere between there, which we don't need to know. But what I do want to know is that it's going to go that and it's also going to go like that give or take okay. so take time and observe what you're seeing on the graph you need to find the solutions I'll give you two minutes to do that and then this is in the next door to me. Then I will. Students getting the surgery. Okay, I need you to put two stars, one star, question mark, two question marks. How comfortable are you? If I gave you this graph, it's all there. If you think it's the answer, it looks like it's something, it is that what you think it is. At identifying the two different solutions, where am I going to end up putting that little star and what would the coordinates for those points be? I need some votes in the chat. If you have some answers, feel free to put them over there. So two stars is, yeah, I found the two points where they cross. I know what the numbers are. I'm done with it. One star, I think I know how to do the thing. I'm in the process of making the graph or whatever. Question mark, confused about what the solutions look like. Two question mark, don't get pulled. Then need you voting. They're saying naming names to get you awake. Thank you, Antonio. Alex, Uriah, Edward, Javier. We start vote. How comfortable are you getting these solutions? This is the easy problem. You don't do all the other stuff. It's already there. All the work that we put in for doing VASTI, doing Y equals MX plus B, solving the equation. Somebody already did it here. We're just looking at the work. They just didn't give us the thing where the answers are at. But they did give us this where we can read it off of. Again, this metacognition step, this retrieval thing with you voting, important for me to know what you're doing but also more important for you in knowing how how behind am i how caught up am i it's new but it's not that new what you should have noticed is this is where one solution is here's the other one okay what are the coordinates of that one one two three three what's the one from down here this is negative two negative two done that's how quick it should go the long part, if you're like showing me work so that I know what you were looking at, is you draw in the graph. You getting an answer, it takes 30 seconds. Okay, I'll let you know how to read graphs. I know that. Perfect. Okay, that's all that problem is. Okay. Now we're going to get also to problems. Not every single problem needs a graph. Some of them are just going to ask you for what are the numbers or what types of numbers are you going to get? 
or can we actually solve it with the math two skills that we should have at the moment? And that answer may be no. For the math three people, if they're doing that problem, the answer should be yes, I know how to do things with the new thing we learned this year. The one math three person having there, she's like, no, I don't know. How to do she, she maybe does sometimes. So how many real solutions this symbol means exist? Edmentum uses it sometimes. I would get used to seeing it so that when it pops up, you're not shocked, especially towards the end of the year when we get to statistics, it shows up there at some point. Okay. By real, what do I mean? Like normal number that you know about. Fractions, decimals, whole numbers, square roots of positive numbers, that kind of thing. If you've heard of it, it's probably a real number. Okay. And for what? For the system of equations. We have our pair of equations. Let me give you the pair of equations. Equation number one is y equals x minus 3. This is linear. I don't see exponents. This is the line. Number two, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10. Exponent two, this is quadratic. That's a parabola. Parabola line, they cross two places maybe. They don't have to. Okay, we, what, what, do, what do we need to do? 1 equals 2. Why? Because there's a y here and there's a y there. Equation 1 says this. Equation 2 says the following. Okay. We need to get a 0 on one side. I see x squared here. So make the other side equal to 0. Positive, negative, positive, negative. This one goes here. It's a 1. That may be helpful. Plus 3. Cancel, cancel, 0. Notice parts that should be sort of quick. You're noticing I'm picking up the speed. When I slow down, those are the parts that a minute, minute and a half, a little bit longer. It shouldn't take 10 minutes for every step. Okay, that's too slow. If not, you're going to be the fast food worker in the drive through who, like, it's taking forever to make the thing. You don't want to be that person. Moderate speed, I'm like, okay, make it well. Okay, we have this. What we should check first is, can we do this? After thinking about it for maybe two minutes tops, you should say, that's not possible. I can't do that and that right there. So you move on to the quadratic formula, the negative boy thing, the thing from lesson four, which you should know how to do by now. It's just you picking up the calculator and deciding I'm going to actually do the work. So I'm not going to do it for you, yourselves. Okay. So how does that look? Well, we're going to do x equals, because I have that equal to zero thing, negative boy. Couldn't decide. That's because you have two things. Radical party, the boy was squared. Lost out on four awesome chicks. Chicas. Or my math three person said cats. Just thinking about cats for some reason. 2a. Okay, let me put this the correct way. The other way. So what is b? b is negative 7. So negative 7 goes there. There. The other two numbers, the A is 1, the C is 13. The bottom is 1. Negative 1 times negative 7 is equal to 7 plus minus. The stuff inside the square root is what you put in the calculator. Jasmine, if you could go to the green thing. It is green, right? Yeah. The, on Meta Calculator, if you are on the home page, scientific calculator is in green, graphing is in blue. The blue is when you need to type an X. If you don't need to type an X, go to the green section. Okay, you're going to type all of this into the calculator. What we really want to know is, is it a positive or a negative? That will give us enough information as to what they were asking. If they're asking us, do you, how many, like, do you get any normal answers or do you get, like, something weird? Is it, like, impossible for math two people to do at the moment? Thank you for being diligent. If not, that'd be me <laughs> clicking away at the thing. I had to do it off to the side because if we don't, then if I do it on the actual Chromebook on recording, then it's going to lag too much. Notice if you type all the things, you get negative 3. So let's go put it over here at negative 3. 
and see if we have an issue with this. Math three better not tell me they have an issue with it. If not, I'm going to say something to them. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't, but I would remind them what it means. Okay. Because what we want to do, we want to do seven plus whatever the square root of negative three is, and then divide it by two. But if you put this in the calculator, it's going to yell at you. I'm assuming 99% of them is going to say illegal thing. If it's super nice, it's actually going to translate it to the thing the math three knows about. You can't at your level, math two folks. You can't do this yet, can't do yet, okay? So that means that this has zero real, like in math kind of real, like normal kind of number of things, real solutions. This is the natural symbol with the double little line thing. Why? Because there's that negative thing. You would technically get two complex solutions. That's what it would be called, but you don't need to know that yet. Just planting that little seed in your mind so that when you get to it, you get to it. Okay, another one of the quick problems, the ones that after we sketch the graph, it should take you 30 seconds and that's it. It takes me a little bit longer to draw the graph because I don't want to give away what you're supposed to be looking at. I want you to use your mental muscles to see and to look at the corners of graph paper if we have the graph paper. If I had like graph paper whiteboards and stuff like that. Okay, so let me see. Hmm. Okay, let me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need nine this way. One, two, three, four. I need about four this way. One, two, three, four. But not too even, but we'll make it work. And about two this way. Nothing on the bottom. Okay, my line. Oh, wait, I do need something on the bottom. Oh, actually, I don't. I don't even need the numbers. I can sort of fake this. The number. So somewhere down here, at negative, negative two or so. The line is like somewhere like right here, and it goes up to. One second. Like to one. Like one is like up here. So we're gonna draw our line. This graph actually has a meaning in the real world, by the way. And then there's like a dot right here, which the parabola is going to go like there, and then it lands like right here at this one. It does something like this. If you've seen the movie, what's it called? I think it's called King Richard. What sport is that about? I think it's called King Richard on HBO Max or at the movie theaters. None of you know about that? That's about tennis, about the Williams sisters and their dad. There's a tennis ball. The tennis ball is the green thing. Venus or Serena hit the ball up in the air and it went like that. Okay, that's how things move ideally in the world. If there's wind, obviously wiggle is different. What other color did I use? This other one is a balloon. Okay. I'm assuming it's filled with helium. That's why it's like down here. We let it go and it goes up there. Okay. You should be able to identify the solutions of this system of equation. One answer is right here, just to make sure. Okay, the other answer is over there. Oops, okay. I don't need a number. You can see it down here. It's a one. Okay. The x axis right here, x is seconds. Okay. The y is feet. So, tennis player hits the ball up in the air at the same time you release a balloon. Okay. At some point, they actually crossed each other. You, you timed it perfectly and you made a YouTube video, one of those where the things cross and all that kind of neat thing. It took you a bunch of times, I'm assuming. You didn't do it on the first try. That's impossible. Okay. Which one of these two answers makes sense for where the balloon is going to actually cross the, the ball? Is it choice A down here or choice B? Need you to vote. Which one actually makes sense in this scenario? Tennis ball, balloon. Where can they actually cross and which one doesn't make sense? Only one of them makes sense. I'm going to add some questions over here while hopefully you vote. How many? You want to know how many solutions does this have? And how many are viable? Viable means make sense in real world in the scenario we're talking about. So 
you should know because I pointed it out to you. Hopefully you would have known by yourself. There's two answers. Do both of them make sense? Vote for the one that makes sense. Only one of them does, A or B. Solution A says they cross after negative two seconds. The ball and the balloon cross. Selection B says after one second, they cross. Which one makes sense? I one vote, need other votes. Hopefully he's not the only one who is quick and alert. I'm glad that he is though. And another five seconds. Some of you are not look, making yourselves look good when we get to phone calls. Remember that after your break, at some point, you have achievement chats. I can leave a message for them as well or pop in and see where you're at. And some of you are mine for achievement chats, so that doesn't help you. Okay, only this one makes sense. This is viable. This doesn't make any sense. How can it be negative two seconds? That doesn't exist in like normal reality. So this is an extra answer because reality is basically right here, right? She hits the ball up or she's standing up there. I don't know how that would work, but this is the only one that makes sense. There's only one answer that makes sense. Tomorrow, what's going to be going on? I didn't finish all the problems. Obviously, I got halfway through. I think there's 10 that I wanted to do. I'm going to continue on these lessons. I do know that some people, again, I remember seeing Cristal's name for some mastery testing she passed about a high score on. I remember seeing Javier loaded some stuff. I think I saw Antonio's name. I don't know if I saw Urias or Edward. Edward, you need to upload things for Unit 3, though, to remind you again. Hopefully you're listening. The post-test, whatever work you have, I'll take it, dock you off some, but you're done with that. So load stuff up so I know where you're at throughout the day. Hopefully you'll be getting notifications yourselves about these grades so you'll know okay he did see all the things i've done if you happen to be ready with lessons one through three then you'll be able to test starting tomorrow i haven't seen the post test not in a while so i don't know if it gives you a normal amount of problems or way too many i'm going to choose as many problems as i believe should take you about an hour to hour and a half about three hours okay to make it a fair and evil even playing field prepare yourselves you okay <laughs> Okay, so tomorrow we'll finish off lesson five. You'll be listening even if you're testing on stuff. Try to finish as much as you can and put in the hours. For several of you, it's gonna take you about six hours of math to get you caught up on unit four. You wanna be able to at least do that test Friday or Monday, okay? Signing off. This video should be uploaded at some point today once I check to make sure that it looks right.